Hey folks, Ms. Gosling here. In this video, you are going to learn about dropped projectile motion problems. By the end of this video, you will be able to define projectile motion and apply the kinematics equations to projectile motion problems. So let's go ahead and get started. So projectile motion, we are going to define as any situation where an object is pushed or launched into the air. Another way to think about this is any situation where an object is in free fall, but has an initial velocity in the x direction. So what that means is that our object is going to follow a path something um, like this. It's going to start out going horizontal and then is going to gradually move downwards in the vertical direction as um, it falls to the ground. So let's go ahead and talk about how to solve problems with this situation in mind. And to do that, what we're going to start by talking about is what, we'll, what we assume um, for pushed or for dropped projectile motion problems. And so when I say a dropped projectile motion problem, what I mean is that all of the initial velocity is in the x direction. And I call this a dropped problem because often we're talking about things being dropped out of, off of like cliffs or out of planes or out of cars or something like that. So one easy example is if you are walking down the road at a constant velocity and you have a ball in your hand and you, it, and you drop it while you are walking, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and continue to fall to the ground. We can also talk about for example, a plane dropping a package. So if this is a package getting dropped from a plane, the plane is going this direction, the package is also going that direction when it starts. And as it falls out of the plane, it's going to, due to gravity, fall to the ground, but continue to have that same forward momentum. And one thing that is very important to know is that our plane and our package are gonna to continue to have the exact same position in the X direction throughout their motion. So if the plane is here after one second, the object will be here after one second. And that is because the velocity in the x direction is constant, as you can see in my assumptions here. We are going to assume that in the x direction, our acceleration is zero, and all of our initial velocity is in that direction. Similarly, in the y direction, we will assume that our acceleration is negative 9.8, as it always is in free fall. And we're going to assume that our initial velocity is zero, as we're assuming that all of our initial velocity is in the x direction. So that's a lot of information. Let's go ahead and actually solve a problem, shall we? Example number one. A stone is projected horizontally from the top of a cliff with an initial velocity of three meters per second. The stone landed 100 meters away from the cliff. How high is the cliff? So let's draw our picture up at the top. Here is our cliff and here is our stone and it's gonna get projected horizontally at three meters per second. And it is going to go ahead and follow that nice parabolic path all the way down to the ground, landing here 100 meters away from the base of the cliff. And what we want to do is figure out the height of the cliff. And to do that, what we're going to want to do is separate our situation into an x direction and a y direction. So what I like to do is I like to make what I call kind of a double SUVOT table. So I write out my S, U, V, A, and T. And I fill out my SUVOT table in both the x and y directions. Because as you should remember from our introduction to free fall or to um, projectile motion, our X and our Y motion are completely independent of one another. So let's go ahead and fill out our table. So we know that all of our initial velocity is going to be in the X direction. So that our initial velocity in the X direction is zero. We also know that our initial velocity in the Y direction in this kind of projectile motion problem is going to be zero regardless. So again, three meters per second for X, zero for Y. 
we also know that our acceleration is going to be 0 for x and negative 9.8 for y. Finally, we know that the stone landed 100 meters away from the cliff. And we know that's in the x direction because we know that that's our horizontal distance from the cliff. And we want to figure out how high the cliff is, which is, of course, our displacement in the y direction, because we want to figure out how far down the stone traveled. So for both the x and the y direction, we don't really care about our final velocity, because the question does not ask you to do anything related to that. However, we do need to figure out our time in the x direction, and that is going to be our first step. Now, the reason I need to start by finding my time is because the object, object is going to hit the ground at one point in time. So that means that the time in the x direction is equal to the time in the y direction is equal to just some random time t. So if I find the time in the x direction, I can write that in my column for the y direction, and then I'll have enough information to figure out my displacement like I want to. And this is usually going to be kind of the first step for these problems is finding your time. Almost always you're going to, need to either use your y direction information or your x direction information to figure out the amount of time the object is in the air to figure out whatever other piece of information you might be missing. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pick out an equation. Now, you have a few options here. What you can do is you can go through your kinematics equations, and I think that's probably the easiest for most people. So let's go ahead and write out our kinematics equation. So S equals ut plus 1 half at squared. And I've gone in, paused the video to write those last four equations, and you can see them here. So what I want to do, um, and I'll go ahead and I'll make our x stuff all in blue, and I'll pick a different color for y. Um, so what I want to start by doing is finding my equation for x. And that is, of course, going to be the equation without v, since v is what I don't care about. So, looking at my four equations, I know that my equation in the x direction is going to be that first one. So s is equal to ut plus 1 half at squared. And what I'm going to do is plug in some numbers. So we can go ahead and sub and solve for the x direction. I'm not even going to write that out because this is kind of some preliminary work here. So s is 100. And that is going to equal 3 times t plus 1 half times 0 times t squared. And what's lovely is this 0 means that our whole second term cancels out, allowing us to simplify our equation to 100 equals 3t. And we can find t by dividing both sides by 3, giving us t is equal to 33.3 seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take that 33.3 and add it to my SUBOT table for y. Because again, my object hits the ground at one point in time, so it's going to hit 100 meters at the same time that it hits whatever the height of the cliff is. So with this information, I can now figure out my displacement in the y direction. And what I'm going to do for that is do what I'm going to call equation 2.0 and find my displacement in the y direction. So again, I don't know my final velocity, nor do I care about it. So I'm going to be using the same equation. So I'm going to say is s is equal to ut plus 1 half at squared. And this time, I'm going to use the equation from my y column here. So my displacement is s, what I'm which is what I'm trying to find. My initial velocity is 0. And my time is 33.3 seconds, as I found out here. Plus 1 half times negative 9.8 times 33.3 squared. And of course, when I simplify that, what I will get is that s is equal to 1 half times negative 9.8 times 33.3 squared, since 0 times anything is 0. And when I multiply that out, what I'll get is that s is equal to negative 5,400 meters, meaning that the height of my cliff is 5,400 meters tall.
because again, heights are always positive. So there you go, guys. I have an answer to this question. And what I did was I filled out, I started and I filled out my two dimensional SUVOT table. I figured out using my information for the X direction, how long my object was in the air, put that in the SUVOT table for my Y direction and use that information to figure out my displacement. So before I end this, let's do one more example. I know this is gonna be a long video, sorry guys. So an airplane traveling at 300 meters per second drops a package. The plane is traveling at a height of 2000 meters. How far will the package travel before it hits the ground? Where will the plane be relative to the package when this happens? So we've got our plane, we've got our package, and the package is gonna fall to the ground. And we know that that height now is 200 meters. And we wanna figure out the X distance that the, plane, the object is gonna travel in within that height. So let's go ahead and start by filling out our 2D SUVOT table again. So I know that my plane is traveling at 300 meters per second, and I know that that, that that is my initial velocity in the X direction, because I know that for these dropped problems, my initial velocity in the Y direction is zero. I also know that this being free fall, my acceleration in the X direction is zero, and my acceleration in the Y direction is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know that the box um, falls 2,000 meters, so it starts up in the air, and falls down to the ground, giving it a displacement of negative 2,000 meters. Finally, I know that because my, my question is asking me how far the package will travel, that I am looking for my displacement in the X direction. Finally, I know that I do not care about my final velocity in either direction. And looking at my, my, what I, my information I have, what I know is that step one is gonna to be to figure out my time in the y direction. And I know this because I have three pieces of information in the y direction and only two in the x direction. And in order to find anything, I need three pieces of information. Um, and I know that I need to find my time because that is the piece of information that is the same in both directions. Since again, my object is gonna hit the ground at one moment in time. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find my direction in the, my time in the y direction, use that to fill out this square in my x table, and then with that finished information, I can figure out my displacement in the x direction. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna just call this the equation and the sub and the solve step, because really, I'm kind of combining them all together at this point. So, in the y direction, I wanna find the equation that does not have my, my final velocity, which is gonna be that same equation I used last time. So I'm gonna say that s is equal to ut plus one half a t squared, and I can replace these all with y's except for that t, which of course is the same in both dimensions. So my displacement is negative 2,000 meters. That's equal to u zero times t plus one half times negative 9.8 times t squared, or simplifying, negative 2,000 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared, since this term here will cancel, and I can start by multiplying 1 half times negative 9.8 to give me negative 4.9. So what I'm gonna do next is decide, divide both sides by negative 4.9, giving me t squared equals 408. Taking the square root of both sides will give me t is equal to 20.2 seconds, which I can now fill in my table here in my x direction, so 20.2 seconds. And now I can go ahead and do my equation substitution and solution steps for the x direction. And again, I'm gonna use that same equation. And I know that because V is still my extraneous information. So in the X direction, I can say that S is equal to UT 
plus one half AT squared, or S is equal to 300 times 20.2 plus one half times zero times 20.2 squared. And I know that this whole second term is gonna be equal to zero since zero times anything is zero. And what I am gonna do next is go ahead and multiply 300 times 20.2, 20 giving me S is equal to 6,100 meters. Well, it's 60, 60.9, but we are gonna call round that up to 6,100. And there you have it, folks. I have successfully solved this problem. Well, that is, I've solved the first part. I still need to be able to explain where the plane will be relative to the package when the package hits the ground. And what I know is that my plane has a constant velocity of 300 meters per second in the x direction, and so does my package. So what this means is that the plane will be right 2,000 meters above the package, but at the same x direction. Or same horizontal location, we could call this. In other words, we could say that the plane is 2,000 meters directly above the package. With directly above, sorry guys, I'm running out of space. With directly above being kind of the key words here. So let's go ahead and move to our takeaways because this has been a very long video. So takeaways, when an object is dropped with, hor with only horizontal velocity, we know that u y is zero, a y is negative 9.8, and a x is zero. We also know that in projectile motion, the objects x and y motion are independent from one another. So we know, and we learned this in an early, in um, our introduction to projectile motion as well, but I wanna go ahead and just re review that because in this video, you guys got to see how that affects the math. Um, and there is of course that one important exception and that is of course time. So the time is the same for both X and Y. So with that, it is now your turn to do some, to solve some horizontal projectile motion problems. Best of luck, you guys, and happy solving.